are following Yahweh. Once you begin to study the documents, you go back and look at the Torah, look at the prophets, read the Gospels again, side by side with the with wherever the Constitution and these great documents, okay, you begin to see that it is totally in opposition to the Word. That's what you begin to see. But doesn't it say to study to show yourself approved unto the Creator? A workman need not be ashamed, right to dividing the word of truth. So if you take the word, if you take this book, and you set it beside the Constitution, and you take it line upon line, precept upon precept, you're going to find out that it is a sham. It is a sham. Let's read on. See, now these judges and all, they pass these laws... And, 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 and we look at it by Congress, including those that le legalize infanticide, somata, sodomy, and they become supreme law of the land. These laws were never accepted in the Word. No, no. Sodomy, infanticide, and abortion was never accepted in the eyes of the Creator. Never. Never accepted. But they're accepted because this little bitty tree called the Constitution has grown into what it has, and bam, your representative that you voted for, not me. I hadn't voted since Reagan, I believe. You see? You see, I hadn't voted, I think it's since Reagan. Maybe first, uh, maybe I voted for that first uh, Bohemian Grove Bush. Maybe, yeah, maybe I, that was the last person I voted for was the old, old Bush. The Bohemian CIA devil worshiper. Yeah, I did vote for him. I had to repent of it. Since then, I've not cast a vote nowhere because I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it, ladies and gentlemen. But you see, Yahweh's law condemns infanticide, sodomy, and the list never ends. And it, this is only the tip of the iceberg. I'm talking to you about. You see. Your constitution says, by way of your legislators and your presidente, go ahead. Am I right or wrong? Now, rebuke me if I'm wrong, but that's exactly right. The beginning of the tree, it growed, it flourished in the demonic activity that it's doing, and it moves on. It's kind of like this right here. Hey, so many people, listen to me, so many people, NRA, all that good stuff, right? Biggest lobbyist up there in Washington, some of them, is in R.A. But wait, wait a minute. And Wires himself can testify to this. You have all these rallies going on. You have all these rallies. People spend tons of money and tons of time to go to these Second Amendment rallies. And I'm trying so hard here not to get in the flesh and cuss. But they ain't one flipping bullet in the AR or the pistol. And they got to get them a permit from the legislature and the local council to put their weapon and display their freedom. Thank you for the Constitution. That Second Amendment's really working out for you, ain't it? Let me calm down and move on. I'm just telling the truth. Let's move on. You see, you got to understand that these people that go to the pulpit that tell you that you've got to obey government and if they say turn in your weapons, turn them in, they are false prophets and liars. They have they are preaching another Messiah. They're not preaching the true Messiah. Let me move on. Separation of church and state. Christian constitutionalists often point out that the term separation of church and state is found in the Constitution of the USSR, not the Constitution of the United States. This is true, nevertheless. The mandate for separation of church and state is inherent in Article 6 in two levels. The Constitution is declared to be the supreme law of the land, which makes any law secular or biblical contrary to the supreme law. Null and void and non-excusable by the Constitutional Republic. Religious qualification for government officials is denied which prohibits biblical qualifications. The elimination of a public oath to uphold the kingship and the law of Yeshua Mashiach 
in the civil realm automatically erect an ethical wall of separation between the crown rights of Yeshua and the federal government, thereby barring all followers of Yeshua from ever holding public office from that time forward. Did you hear what I just said? Did you just hear what I just said? Listen to me. L listen to me. Where's my water at? Are you listening to me? Listen to this. If you're going to be a follower of the Messiah, and I mean, I mean if you're going to sell out to him and follow him, you cannot take an allegiance to be a representative, local or national, for this government and claim that you're a follower of the Messiah. There is no way to do it. There's no way to do it. There's too much involved in having to bow to a demonic Babylonian Roman system. How can you do it? How can you do it? And that's not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that there are not people up there that are just trying to wake people up. Okay? You understand? Don't misunderstand me. But what I am saying is they have to fall under the leadership and the authority of a secular atheistic government rather than falling under the authority of the laws of the word. You see? I gotta move on for the sake of time. I don't mean I kept y'all two hours here. You see, what about this Bill of Rights? The first ten amendments, commonly known as the Bill of Rights, were a compromise between constitutional framers and the anti-federalists who opposed the Constitution as it originally was framed. In theory, the Bill of Rights protects, among other things, the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. But, have life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness advanced since the ratification of the Bill of Rights? Have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness advanced since the Bill of Rights? Ask the question to yourself, then answer it to yourself in all honesty, wherever you're sitting and whatever you're doing, has the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness advanced or declined? Okay. So it's been in decline ever since its conception in terms of the Constitution. It's just that you and I thought that it was pushing forward and expanding. Sorry, it's not. Listen. We often hear the Bill of Rights is based upon the given rights of Yahweh. The scriptures provide no evidence of the given rights from Yahweh in terms of the Constitution. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Of course, rights are much more popular than responsibilities. Everyone, including the homosexual and the infant murderer, demands his rights, but few are interested in fulfilling their responsibilities. Now, see the Puritan idea of liberty was quite different from that of the framers of the Constitution. Listen to this. Listen to this. John Winthrop, governor of Massachusetts, Bay Colony, reminded his fellow citizens of Massachusetts that a doctrine of civil rights like the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, which looked to natural or sinful man as its source of guardian, was actually destructive. See, that's what I keep telling y'all. Uh, it hit me like a brick right upside the head, except I ain't got no scars and I ain't bleeding. It was just to wake me up in studying. If we're going to look, listen to me, if we're going to look as a nation to secular man and secular government to solve our problems when we know that our problems is sin, how can they ever be solved? No, they can't. They can only flourish and grow and multiply until destruction cometh from the Almighty because people chose that secularism. People chose to be a heathen. You see, you understand. Oh, we're following the path of the Creator. Let's move on. Let's move on. Although the First Amendment does not allow for the establishment of one religion over the other, it eliminates it eliminates the ability, if you're going to follow the laws of this Babylonian Roman system, it eliminates your ability to be able to freely serve Yahweh in the way you want to do if you're going to be under that system. 
you see. Amendment 1 did exactly what the framers proclaimed it to do. It prohibited the exercise of true Christianity or true followers of the Messiah and established polytheism in its place. This explains the government's double standard regarding uh, followers of Messiah and non-followers of Messiah. For example, court participants, listen, court participants entering the United States District Court of Appeals for Middle, uh, excuse me, for Middle District Alabama must walk by a statute of Themis and a Greek goddess of justice. Yet, in November 18, 2002, they ruled that Judge Roy Moore's Ten Commandments violated the First Amendment, but yet they got to walk by a Greek goddess statue and a statue of Themis. Bingo. Checkmate. Shall I go any further? Don't you see? Let's move on. You know, though, you know, though, saying when in Rome, do like Rome, that'll send you to hell. Go ahead and keep doing like Rome. Now, let's get to one of my most favorite that is misunderstood. A well-regulated militia being necessary to secure the uh, uh, security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's a, it's a trap. I misunderstood it too for many years, and I, man, I shouted it from the rooftop, Second Amendment, Second Amendment, Second Amendment. Then here recently you've seen me change. I have a paradigm shift because I've been telling you that the right to have what I have right here, it comes from the Creator. If I accept that the right comes from a Second Amendment, I am in deep doo-doo. Because I'm saying that the government and the Constitution gave me the rights to have this and to have this and to be able to do what i got to do with it, then I'm wrong. Then when that is, hey, the good NRA buddies up there, when they want to keep it for sporting arms or whatever, and when their money runs out and, 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 and the New World Order just says, forget about you, we don't have enough of you, then, absolutely, they'll be the first in line with their registered weapons to get them taken. Let's move on. Few Americans are more strident about their constitutional rights, particularly the Second Amendment guarantee to keep and bear arms. Hunters, gun enthusiasts, and the uh, Washington Special Interest Group, such as the National Rifle Association, Gun Owners of America, they form to protect these rights. As a gun owner and a hunter, they're very concerned about their right to keep and bear arms. However, however, don't you remember me shouting this from the rooftop? As the head of this house, based on the principles of the book, not the Constitution. Based on the principles of this book because I can't have two masters. Based on the principles of this book, no one is being the head of my house. I am concerned. I am very concerned that if I were to follow the Second Amendment laws rather than to follow the laws of the Creator, I'm very concerned that if I were not ready to use this at a moment's notice if the door gets broke in, I'm concerned that I will not, when I stand before the judgment seat, that I will be called one that would not protect his family and his home and his friends. People say, well, nah, Second Amendment ain't going to never change. See, if you follow it, you're going to change with it. Second Amendment don't change. Well, how come in California you could tote a weapon but you can't have a magazine? How come in, in Chicago, you know, you got your stuff out, outlawed and banned? It ain't gonna never change though! The Constitution is a document you need! All you gotta do is look up the changes. The Constitution don't mean a hell of beans. What means a hell of beans is what is in your heart and what do you want to live by? Or what are you willing to die for? That's the question. Fear resides in the heart of a coward. A slave, a slave, a slave will go to their day thinking one day they'll have freedom. You hear me? A slave will go to their day hoping and thinking that somebody else around them will give them freedom. A follower of Yeshua, when they come to the knowledge of His Word after they accept Him, know that nobody can enslave them. Period. Period. Wire says you can't even carry it empty anymore. Well, that's your Second Amendment that has uh, evolved. What a great Second Amendment it used to be. Now, it was always based that people get under that, therefore they can take it. Now let's move on. 
Listen, take